What's going on guys? Christian here from CK Raps. Don't forget to check out my website, ckrapstoronto.com in the top left corner there. I'll put a link there for you. Now, the products and tools that I'm using today, I'm gonna to put in the description, description below and I'm gonna show you how to wrap this shark fin antenna on a BMW. Now, this BMW has one of the easier shark fin antennas to wrap. Can we do it in one piece? Yes, we can. Can we do it in two pieces? Sure, we could. Do we have to? No, we can do this in one piece and I'm gonna show you how to do that today. So first of all, I'm gonna start off with some basics here. We're gonna start off by wiping it down with isopropyl alcohol, 70%. We need a squeegee. We need, and I use, this is a gold squeegee, so it's a bit more firm, more rigid, good for tucking. We need a clean rag, microfiber cloth, and we need some masking tape, a heat gun, and the vinyl that we're gonna be using. Now, particularly on BMWs, they silicone or seal these antennas on. They're a bit tricky to get off, but they're actually one of the easier ones to take off. I actually prefer to take these off out of all antennas. But what that means is that this is not like a one day turnaround because we have to reseal the antenna again afterwards with black silicone to make sure obviously water doesn't get inside. You can't just two side tape it. That's not good enough. It has to be re-siliconed. Uh, the, the trick to it is just to use some fishing line and just you can kind of cut through it and then clean up your silicone and then re-silicone it afterwards. Very small bead all the way around. I'm not gonna take this one off. We're gonna wrap it while it's on the car. A bit more tricky that way since it doesn't allow us to actually pull the vinyl through and around the underside as I would like to do. Because if we can pull it through and around the underside, that means that we can actually tuck in underneath as much as we want and not worry about anything pulling up from the bottom. Doing this is gonna require a bit more technique as far as stretching it goes because we're gonna actually have to stretch it in a way where the film wants to shrink itself around that underside. And if we don't stretch it enough in a certain way, this means that we're gonna actually have the issue of lifting from the bottom. Soren behind the camera is the test dummy for this. We're gonna leave it on for the next year and see how it goes. He doesn't want me, he doesn't want me to leave it on. So we're gonna probably have to take it off. So first of all, I'm gonna wipe off the antenna with isopropyl alcohol and the surrounding area. This car's not clean. He said he wanted to wash it for the video, but I said no. We're just gonna show it the way it is all the time. <laughs> so once we wipe that off, we're gonna take our squeegee, wrap our microfiber cloth around it, just mist it a little bit, and then we're gonna go around the underside, making sure that we've gotten any residue from the underside, could be wax, but I highly doubt it because Soren probably never waxed his car in his entire life. And then I'm gonna go over it one more time just to make sure that I've gotten the recesses here really good because this is where we're gonna need a lot of the film to stick. All right, next step, masking tape. I've got two inch 301 plus here, 3M 301 plus. And we can try to shimmy it sort of underneath the antenna slightly. If possible, it'll only go so far since there is that silicone bead underneath. I just don't want to be overlapping the paint, which I just did there. So I'm going to flip my piece of tape around because I folded it. We want to be pretty close to that bottom edge of the antenna. If we're not close to that bottom edge in the antenna, that means that our film is gonna adhere to the paint on the roof and we're not gonna be able to shrink it around the underside like we want to. So very, very important to get as close as you can on this. It's gonna make things a lot easier for you. Let's finish up the other side. Two inch tape's good for this because we, have, we don't have to put down as many layers as if we had like one inch. Let's go under the corner first slightly. And then we'll come across, oh, just fold that up so that's garbage. Come across the back. And then 
one more piece right there. Perfect. We're masked off. Now, when it comes to doing roof wraps, I only ever use, for gloss black, Avery. I don't touch anything else. Saves you time, saves you money. Much easier to use. And the glossiness of it is pretty glossy and it's pretty black. The, the, the variance from color to color for black is almost negligible. You can almost never tell the difference between it. Nothing is really true black in my opinion, but it is about as close as it gets. So Soren's gonna bring the camera in so we can give you the best example of how I'm gonna do this right now. The trick to this antenna is that I'm gonna start at the most difficult point. Usually that's this end, but if I was doing this in two pieces and capping the back, then yes, it would be this end. But since I'm not capping the back and I'm gonna do this in one piece, I'm gonna start at this end and work my way across that end. Where is the failure more likely to happen? Well, it's at the front end of it. So we wanna really make sure that we're, when we're stretching at this end, we're really giving it a nice three-dimensional stretch or 3D stretch around that nose of the antenna and then shrinking it down and around, ensuring that we've got that grab underneath. Let's start it. Now, if you're having a difficult time, even for me, I'm, not, I'm tall, but I'm not that tall, then you open the door and you can get in a little bit closer by standing on the actual uh, door jam or footstep or whatever you want to call it. Now, can you do this by pre-stretching the film? Sure. Or I can just do it like this. I don't like to necessarily pre-stretch the film all the time because we may end up stretching the very end of it accidentally. That, the very end of it meaning like right down here at the bottom. But what we do want to do right now is ensure that we've got some good bite and some good bonding right here because this is what's going to hold us right now end to end. So as we heat and stretch and bring the film across, this is all that's going to hold us right down here. Since I have tape here, it's not going to really ca cause a lot of ad uh, adhesive promotion. promotion. I'm going to stand on the doorstep. This is going to give me a better perspective of what I'm looking at. So okay, it looks like we have coverage. Now I'll take the film and the heat gun. I'm going to lift it off. You can see that I'm completely off. We're going to make sure we heat the sides. Heat gun's going to hit the floor. Goodbye, heat gun. <laughs> That's okay. And then we have to stretch it all the way forward. This may or may not have been enough stretch. I think it was. I'll find out as soon as I go to heat it and shrink it down. I'm not sure if I got enough on the passenger side there. As I get to the nose of the antenna on this side, sorry, do you want to bring the camera over? So as we can see right here, I have slack. I'm pretty sure that I have too much slack in this area. And I was, I'll, I'll go over what I was going to say about the nose of the antenna. So I'm going to fix that up right now, bring the film back, and then pull it through more. And now as you can see, that, that slack should tighten up. Looks better to me. Now Soren's going to bring the camera to the front. So the trick to doing this right now is that I, I need to expand the film outwards so it pulls inwards on the sides. And then I'm also pulling it down and slightly around the edge. When I do that, you can see we've got a natural curl and a natural hug to this bottom lip. It's perfect. It's the only way to do this without stretching down to the edge. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is grab my heat gun and we're gonna shrink it down. We're gonna check out the sides first. See how it all tightened up? No more slack. Both sides, perfect. The, the film just shrunk itself completely around the antenna. Now my job is to smooth it all out, keep everything balanced, and wrinkle free as we do that. But the critical point right here being the bottom edges, it's not so much through here. It's a little bit tricky on this side for me to do it because I'm not on that side, but I'm not able to really see. There we go. 
Oh, made one wrinkle. There we go. So I'm trying to push down consistently into this recess. This will require a post heat. Again, we don't want to be pulling down to that bottom edge too much. We're just trying to balance out the film. Very minimal wrinkles, which shows we have very minimal tension. Now, can I actually push these away with my finger on this side? Because I can't see. I'm just trying to do this without truly being able to see, but I can show you more on the other side. I just want to be out of your way for the, for the video. Good, we're getting underneath the edge. Look, we can see the squeegee is slightly tucked underneath the edge. That's why I use the gold one. Let's get the air out of there. I saw a little bit. Cool. I'm going to move around to this side now and finish up this side. Same as I just did to the other side. Got one wrinkle there. There we go. I can use my squeegee to help speed things up. I've got a heat right here. Just make sure I've got the, sh the film tightening up the way I need it. That's good. Again, no wrinkles, right? If we have no wrinkles, then we shouldn't have any tension on our edge. By wrinkles, I mean any fingers pulling up towards that top edge. It's the fastest shark fin antenna you'll probably ever do. I wish I could do this on all antennas, but they are not all created equal, unfortunately. So I've got one tiny wrinkle right here. I'm just going to pull that back. We can use the hard edge of our squeegee when we start getting near to an edge or near to the bottom. We don't have to worry about marking the film too much. It's not that much of a concern. I'm going to cut this away and separate the left and the right side. so you can actually see what's going on that we're underneath. Cool. So let's just get that tucked in. So I'm stay right there. And what I'm going to do is show you when I heat this, what's going to happen. We, try, we want to try to get it under the nose while it's slightly cool, because if we heat it first, then it's going to do all its shrinking before we get it around the edge. But if we get it around the edge first and then we heat, then it should grab underneath that bottom edge. Let's finish up the back quick. Sorry, I don't move the camera. It's cool. And I'll be ready to cut in two seconds. making sure that there's no wrinkle on any edge before cutting. Gloss black can be a little tricky sometimes because it's hard to see with it reflecting and it being black. So we just really, really, really be thorough. Take your time with it. If you want to get really fancy, I suggest getting a wrap stick flex. Mine's on the front door here. And this, this little tool right here is gonna, see, it's really gonna show you that we're underneath, right? Exactly where we wanna be. By far the best tool you could get for doing stuff like this. I'm just gonna move around to the other side and then I'm gonna cut and we're gonna shrink. One little wrinkle right on the corner. I'm just gonna pull the film back slightly and push it down. 
There we go. So what I'll do right now is I'll run the heat gun over top of it. Make sure we can see any movement if we need to. I don't see anything moving too much. The film is actually just kind of relaxing. I'll have to let that cool for a second. Got a little bit of air right there. Let's push that out. There we go. And then as we cut, we're going to remain on the antenna side. And I should snap a blade off. Very precise cut usually requires a fresh blade. So we're going to remain on the antenna side, not on the roof. There's that silicone. I can feel that bead. And it requires extreme detail and attention with your eye when you're looking and you're doing this. So I get in close. Get one side out. I don't have to do this all in one pass and pull off an entire ring. We can just do the one side. The true test will be what happens when I have all of this film off and cut to see if it actually lifts or stays down when I heat. Now this is not an ideal way to cut for me right now. I'm trying to stay out of the camera. I want you to be able to see one of these cuts. So I'll just take my time. off the nose here. And I just have the bottom corner to do. If we play around with the film too much, uh, what will happen is we'll start getting glue lines. So we don't want to like, you want to knock this out in like one shot. If you don't happen to do that, then what you're going to want to do is grab a new piece. It's a very small piece. Don't worry about losing it because you try again and then you develop your skill even further. Should be good. Excellent. So I'll just run over it with a squeegee really quick. In case you can see, I can see one little wrinkle right there, right there. But I couldn't see that side. I was trying to allow you guys to get a better visual than what I had, just so you could see what was going on. Once I get it all tucked in and underneath and sealed up, we're gonna run over with heat and call that a wrap for the antenna. Let's do it right now. So I don't see anything lifting up. This is a 500 degree heat gun, point blank. We don't want to heat the film up too quickly, too much too quickly, so we want to gradually heat the film up. Oh, I see a couple of air bubbles there. So the, film, the heat will also clearly show you any air bubbles, if you have any. And if you were to actually measure a post heat, what you would do is you would take out your digital thermometer and check the surface temperature of the film. But that right there is how you're gonna wrap that shark fin in one piece. I hope that this video was informative and helpful to you guys. It's not every day that you can wrap a shark fin antenna in one piece. It may not be for a while that you're able to do one. This is a bit easier, like I said, than some of the other ones. And it's simply because we have the slope aiming back slightly. If it was any different, if it was more flat, it would be much more difficult to do. The hardest point right here is to get no slack and no bunching up 
near the first inch to two inches of this back piece of film. So a lot of the stretch actually ends up pulling through the first inch or two inches right through here. And then the rest kind of just becomes a breeze. So getting it nice and tight through this corner and getting all that extra material out, that's where it becomes more critical. If you don't happen to get that, what's gonna happen is you're gonna end up with too much slack, you're gonna end up stretching the film down too far. And you even saw that I had some wrinkles, I didn't have none, but the, the less wrinkles, the, the less fingering that you have at the edges, the better. Because if you're showing any fingering at the edges, that means that you have pullback. And to counteract that just requires a bit more patience. You might have to get in there, tuck it in a little further, and definitely apply a good post heat if you have more wrinkles than what I had or more fingering than what I had on the edge. Uh, the, what I had on the edge is pretty much, it's totally okay. As long as you know that you've cleaned thoroughly and you've gone over with heat thoroughly afterwards, Again, it's more of a gauge over experience and time that you start to actually notice or understand how much you can have and how little you can have. But again, I hope that this video did show you how you can wrap a shark fin antenna in one piece as opposed to using two. Again, you could do this in two. It wouldn't even look that terrible. You'd only mainly see the line right at the top here. It wouldn't even be down the sides. You would actually just see it coming right across the top. But from here at standing point, like at distance, stand, no, one's, no one's looking at their antenna like this usually. From standing at the side of the car, you would almost not even be able to see the seam if there were one. Try it, try it both ways if you want to. If you have an actual antenna where you can do that, usually BMWs, even some other BMWs are even easier. Uh, and there are even other antennas out there that are even easier than this one, uh, like dome ones, dome style ones that are very low profile. Again, I thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it very much. I hope you enjoyed the video. Take care.